All right. Was she just... Wait a minute. Was she just having a drink? Yep. Yep. She's drinking through a uh, through a helmet. That's... um. Didn't notice that on the first uh, go-around. That's, that's cool. I actually put that helmet on her to see if she would smoke through it, but drinking through it is just as good. So at any rate, here we are. We're doing Lady Luck now. The last of the experiments, the the devious experiments where we have your indentured servitude. Oddly enough, this time it doesn't tell you what it is. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I'm trying to exit back out. I always forget which key that is. Let's see. Yeah, none of them are telling you. Normally, in the other experiments, you select one, it would give you notes on that. Uh, so if all the notes are in one place here. Gambling is alluring by turning nature. In-depth analysis of the techniques. A positive motivational force in the... Okay. Device could manipulate probability to first entice a subject and later drain them of all financial resources. That would ensure that the maximum amount of revenue for the vault. This is the indentured servitude parameter, which is called a normal slot machine. And we can we can uh, have the machine capable of identifying behavior and allowing the overseer to track those with degenerate behavior. So you could you know customer profiling, and then um, let's see. We can have them win more than not, which would just make you lose revenue, but it would make people happy. Okay, that's what we're going to do, I think. We're just going to make people happy, because what could annoy the overseer more than having it lose revenue? And that's really been my goal, is to completely annoy this overseer. I don't mean that lightly. I mean, I had a whole plan for future videos that rested upon annoying this overseer. And you'll see why in a little bit. Okay, so we wait here. Yeah, we only need to wait an hour. Not two. So we let Clem gamble for an hour. Report back to the overseer. Oddly enough, hey, look. She's checking him out. I just can't lose. Let's trade. Let's trade. Yeah, there's nothing. You gotta try this, uh, this slot machine. It's the, it's the best. You gotta like Clem. I also got like how Curie's just putting that glass right through the mask. All right, right through the helmet there. Where's the overseer? We need to find the overseer. There you are. Uh, <clears throat> Let's check in with Clem. Oh, hi. That slot machine thing is a move. Thanks a lot for letting me try it, lady overseer. I'm so glad you are enjoying their hearing must be fantastic. I guess if you really want to RP, just wait for her to show up, and then, you know, there's a tip for you. Your thoughts? Or are you sarcastic? What did I do? Are we letting her get over there? Now we just need a variety act and some crime bosses in our casino set. Ah, your famous wit. It's done. Finally. Hundreds of years of refining and planning. And it's an unmitigated disaster. Residents wasting time and valuable resources. But this place is the best, Lady Overseer. Everyone says so. You see, this. This is what you've done. Vault 88 was supposed to be magnificent. I cannot stand to be in this cheery purgatory you've concocted. Don't you see? All your prototypes worked. The people's lives are better. Is that even English <laughs> speaking? What you say is nonsense. I take my leave of this wreckage you call a vault. I hope you get what you deserve, Overseer. Yay! Okay, now, there's a lot of saving and reloading from here on out, because my whole goal 
The whole point of me even doing Vault 88. Excuse me. Please, take care of the vault. Was to follow this woman out. Please, take care okay, of Okay, she vault. has no real other text here. No other, nothing else she says. But I want to follow her as she leaves the vault and goes out into the Commonwealth and see how far she can get. How long will she survive? Very similar to some of my older videos where I did the uh, Black Knight Caravan Guard. I thought this would be an interesting thing here. I thought this would be, you know, follow her out, do kind of an escort mission. Not necessarily to see how long you keep her alive. Don't get me wrong. That, that wasn't the plan. It was like, what minor thing could take her out? I mean, obviously, you know, Rad Scorpions and Death Claws, but I mean, you know, anything. Super mute. See what her reactions are, you know? If they had unique reactions, then maybe I might keep her alive. If she's like, what's that green thing? Okay, well then maybe, you know, we keep around and see how long things go. So as you can see, I'm just following her along here. As she says, the heck with all of this. I'm trying to think, what, what was she thinking? She's been down here for 200 years. She's never been out there. Doesn't know what's going on. What does she expect to happen here? Is she gonna go get a job in another vault? Uh, does she know where there's other vaults? And she's just going to walk in. I'm the overseer now. Or does she think she'll get sanctuary someplace because she's vault -Tec? Is there a vault -Tec home base someplace? Like, what was the plan? Valerie, what are you thinking? Okay, she's gone, then she's here. Then she's walking into the rocks. Then she's standing there. Then there's Curie. Then she's standing. Then she's gone. Then she's there. Okay, you can't even get out the door. Is that it? Then she's gone. Then she's there. <sighs> All right, maybe if I leave. We'll try that, I thought. Loading screen. The tension of the loading screen, it always gets me. So much tension. That is one of my favorite things though, building robots. I love the robot builder thingy. That's, that's cool. But you get out here and she's not there. All right, well, wait a minute. Where'd she go, right? Is she still down there? The loading screen. Did I mention the loading screen? The tension. The music. The everything's back to normal music. That no one's trying to kill you, music. But we don't even have a little thing to look at, uh, music. What the heck? We don't even have, like, you know, a death claw or something to spin around in front of us here? That's odd. And she's gone. She's just not there anymore. If you leave the, you leave the vault, that's when she just is removed from the game. Uh, no, no, no. This, this can't be it. This can't be what's going to eventually happen here. I need... I need to know what happens to this woman. There we go. There's something that's to spin around in front of us while everything loads. So this time, I figure I'll run out ahead of her so I can see at least some approach angles as she leaves. See if she disappears. Now, she doesn't disappear if she gets out, if you get out of her eyesight. She's going to make this walk. Probably if I exit the vault, yeah, she'll disappear. And 
I mean, at this point, I was really not thinking it was going to work, but you know, I wanted to try at least one more. If I had so much planned, I had so many thoughts. Would he just walk out and just fall in the water? You know, there, there's so many different things that could happen. At least now you get to see her, you know, this might actually make a good end bump screen, just having her walk out of the vault, you know, put the, the basin system services up, something like that. Here she comes. Methodically walking through everything. Oh, Valerie, don't leave. We can still teach you how it is to be human. And I don't mean that because she's a ghoul. I mean that because she's an inhuman... She's not a person. This is this person is she has so little humanity. And there are people like that. There are people. I mean, you know, everyone you know refers to Hitler, but I mean, you know, there there's all kinds of stuff that goes on. One of the experiments I believe was an inspiration here. I remember reading this somewhere that it was an inspiration for all the Vault Tech stuff. Was the Milgram experiment performed by Yale back in let's see back in sixty one, nineteen sixty one. Um, performed by psychologist Stanley Milgram. And uh, I'm looking here at Wikipedia, and it says they've measured the willingness of study participants, men from a diverse range of occupations with varying levels of education, to obey an authority figure who instructed them to perform acts conflicting with their personal conscience. In other words, he made them do bad, evil things. And that was kind of the point. Could you make people do bad things, just as the Nazis had? Participants were led to believe that they were assisting an unrelated experiment in which they had to administer electric shocks to a quote-unquote learner. These fake, now. thankfully, it's electric shocks gradually kind of increased to levels that would have been fatal had they been real. More? The experiment found unexpectedly, and I'm reading right from Wikipedia here, that a, a very high proportion of people would fully obey the instructions, albeit reluctantly. Milgram devised his psychological study to answer the popular contemporary question, could it be that Eichmann and his million accomplices in the Holocaust were just following orders? Could we, could we call them all accomplices? The experiment was repeated many times around the globe, all right, that's just kind of warped too, with fairly consistent results. Now, you got to understand that what was happening here is they would have one person pretend to be, you know, the subject, and as you're, every time you ask them a question, they would get it wrong, and then you'd have to hit the button and hear, oh, hear no. the person scream. The now, the person isn't being Let's zapped, do. he's just do screaming, and after a while, he tells the person, you know, they, oh, they make sure that they tell, the per tell you that the person who is the subject has a heart condition, in one version of the experiment, so that you know they're going to kill them. Now here's the kind of the weird and disturbing part. Well, the whole thing's very disturbing. But they were instructed, the person who's called the teacher, the person given the shocks, the, the, the fake shocks. If at any time the teacher indicated a desire to halt the experiment, the experimenter was instructed to give specific verbal prods. The prods were in this order. One, please continue. Two, the experiment requires that you continue. Three, it is absolutely essential that you continue. Four, you have no other choice. You must go on. If the subject wished to stop after all four successive verbal prods, the experiment was halted. Otherwise, it was halted after the subject had given the maximum 450 volt shock three times in succession. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know really. I, I, there are people who have survived 450 volt shocks, but not a lot of them. Not on a percentage basis. 450 is a lot. I, I had a buddy who took 270 once. He, he was working on a, a switch gear out for, uh, for AT&T, and his electrician had swapped one of the, the, one of the phases on a three-phase 480 with, uh, with chassis ground, basically, with chassis, and th that was tied to ground, and uh, my buddy was, had one hand on the door and then turned on the power, and he got 270 across his chest. Now, luckily, he was an extremely massive guy. This guy was a heavy-duty weightlifter. I think when he finally quit weightlifting, when he, when he was in college, he was a heavyweight wrestler, and he, got, he was ranked eighth nationally. And this was like, he could have gone further, but he was working two jobs and really couldn't, you know, do a lot. He was putting himself through college. Amazing guy. And he's really amazing because he took 270 across his chest. He couldn't see or breathe for like, I forget, 10, 15 seconds, some, some number of seconds. I'm sure it seemed like longer to him. 
And eventually he threw a 20 amp breaker and he took it. I mean, it didn't kill him. I don't think he had to be hospitalized, but he had so much muscle mass in his chest, it must have protected his heart. That's the only thing I could figure out. Uh, he was not happy. And you can imagine that someone who's that built up is not the guy you want to accidentally electrocute. But he, he didn't kill the guy. He was good about that. He did have him fired. But it was, you know, and he quit not that long after that because apparently there were issues. But at any rate, uh, the experimenter also had prods to use if the teacher made specific comments. If the teacher asked whether the learner might suffer permanent physical harm, the experimenter said, although the shocks may be painful, there is no permanent tissue damage, so please go on. If the teacher said that the learner clearly wants to stop, the experimenter provide, replied, whether the learner likes it or not, you must go on until he's learned all the word pairs correctly, so please go on. Uh, where is the answer to the percentages here? Uh, of all of the poll response believe that only a few, believe that only a very small fraction of teachers, the range of zero to three out of 100, with an average of 1.2, would be prepared to inflict the maximum voltage. That was what, the, oh, that's what they predicted. Milgram also informally Please. polled his colleagues and found that they too Take believe that very few subjects would progress beyond a very strong shock. Science and of da -da 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 -da. <laughs> In his first set of experiments, 65% of experiment participants administered the experiment's final massive 450 volt shock. 65% killed the person. Now, these are not psychopaths. These are not murderous people. But they were convinced to go along and to do this thing, which, you know, and all of them of the first administered shocks of at least 300 volts, which is, will kill you. They were uncomfortable to do so and displayed varying degrees of tension and stress. So there's a lot of different things here. First of all, I mean, they, they've made these people go, you know, do things that they know are wrong through some kind of obedience function uh, in, the, in human psychology. They put them through the stress of this. They've left them for the rest of their lives realizing that they can be manipulated, which could be a good thing if you learn from it. If, you're, if you realize that you can be manipulated and you're wary to it, you know. And listen, gamers, realize that we are subject to this. There's not a game out there from Candy Crush to Grand Theft Auto where they're not trying to manipulate you to play the game further and give them more money. I mean, that's just, you know, shark cards are a thing. I forget what it is in Candy Crush. Those candy coin blah blahs. Oh, here, you get these bonuses and you can get to the next level. And your brain can't really distinguish between real life good things. Like if you buy a car in GTA Online, you feel like you just bought a car. And the, that's in your in the back of your head. Like that's how that's how it works. So there are these manipulations go on. Any kind of marketing is is basically doing some level of mind control on you. And this proved that you can take it very far. So that's that's a dangerous thing, you know. Now it was a terribly useful experiment, but was it ethical? Probably not. I mean, you know, this is uh, you really, you know. Oh, here's an interesting Hi. quote. Let's see. Six years later, at the height of the Vietnam War, one of I the participants good. in the experiment sent correspondence to Milgram, explaining why he was glad to have participated despite distress. While I was a subject in 1964, I, though I, though I believed I was hurting someone, I was totally unaware of why I was doing so. Few people ever realize when they are acting according to their own beliefs and when they are meekly submitting to authority. To permit myself to be drafted with the understanding that I am submitting to authority's demand to do something very wrong would, would make me frightened of myself. I am fully prepared to go to jail if I am not granted consci conscientious objector status. Indeed, it is the only course I could take to be faithful to what I believe. My only hope is that members of my board act equally according to their conscience. So he, he this was an, an eye-opener for him, that he realized he could be manipulated or be forced to subject it to authority to do things he didn't agree with. And this is, you know, now we're not going to have a discussion about the, the positives and negatives of the Vietnam War. Well, that's not where we're going here. But it's interesting that this impacted later on how he would react to stuff. And probably he trusts nothing at this point because he's been so badly manipulated. There are other examples, I'm sure, were, were inspirations for Vault Tech. I mean, you know, 
MK Ultra itself, where I mean, the CIA was randomly dosing people with LSD in bars and in brothels that they'd arrange. Because if you have a brothel, you no one wants to say, you know, I was down at the brothel and the CIA was screwing with me. Because who's going to believe that? Number one, and second of all, oh, so you got to pay for it, huh, Dave? You know, it's embarrassing. So you can you can get those people there. And they were actually doing it to themselves. If you worked at the CIA between 53 and 73, there's a chance someone was dropping something in your drink at the, you know, don't, don't buy, you know, anything from the cafeteria. Because stuff was going on. It was, they were messing with people. I mean, they were all, the level, levels of stuff, I don't even want to go into in MPL, but it's just dark. They were doing some very, very dark things. And the people there, again, were subject of this. They were... They were a result of the same Milgram effect where they were being told, well, this is what we need to do for this reason. It's all about the Cold War. We have to have these capabilities so that, you know, it was all about enhanced interrogation. And how can we control people's minds? And creating, you know, Manchurian candidates. If you've never seen that movie, you really have. And that's why I was so anxious to have this, this thing. You know, this, this will call her a woman. And again, I have nothing against ghouls in this game. It's not that she's a ghoul. It's just that she's absolutely without any kind of moral compass. And I don't know if, if like, is, at what point, is she the one submitting to the authority that had been programmed into her, or is this truly what's in her heart? It seems from the conversation that this is what's in her heart. That she really wants, she's having fun with this, you know, it's like, the whole point is to torture people and get something out of it. And that's the fun bit. You know, it's like, if you're into torturing people, get a job where you can torture people. That's, you know, one of the things that goes on. Um, so I was really excited to see how, what would happen when she walks out into the real world. Well, not the real world. I mean, the Fallout world. The Fallout universe. See, she's fine. That's the great thing about Curie. Shoot her with an explosive shotgun. She bounces right back in a few minutes. Now we've got to make our way back. And install that control board. And if you, once you install the control board, you get whole other areas that you can work on. How did I get, I'm lost. Help me, I don't know where I'm going. Back through the hole, okay? We made it back here. Now, where are we gonna go next? I'm trying to remember. I think I might have ended up finding another control board before I found where to install it. You can build on to that, I gather, once you once you get everything done. Not that there's much there. What the heck is trying to eat me? Oh, mole rats. I love how that thing trails radiation while she's running around with it. Could be a lot of editing in this video, I gotta tell you. Yeah, this is, we're in a different sector here. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's he's mad he's explosive and just handles these things, no problem. Okay, this looks a little more built up. Mining helmet. There it is. Excellent. So we have another control board. At this point, I might not, I might have thought that I only had to find them. I might not realize I had to install them. You have to install them too. We'll, we'll show you that. Yeah, because right there I was trying to activate the uh, the workshop on the sound of reasonable basis that I'd already gotten the boards. But you need to put the boards in someplace. Let's see, where do you put them in? There's nothing there. In case you're curious, by this point, yes, I'm completely frustrated. Can't mine through that hole. Already mined through that hole. Okay, we have some pit markers here. Nothing terribly useful. This is one thing, I, I do think that they could have made this. I hit the wrong button. They could have made this a little easier. Or a little more obvious. Uh, help defend Hangman's Alley. Alright, let's go help defend Hangman's Alley. Which I should be able to teleport right out of here. And you don't even have to do much. I mean, you just have to go there. Loading, 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 loading. I don't know if you can tell, I'm using my video camera again because my mic is still offline. I'm trying to go through my cable and find one that'll work for it. Which means I have to watch every single second of this video in one go, or it'll be nigh on to impossible to sync up. It'll, it's, it'll be doable, but difficult. Okay, I think I just got shot in the crotch repeatedly there. They didn't even react. Okay, so that says it's done. I'm not even gonna loop the corpses. I, I was busy doing stuff, okay? Really, I should probably go back there. They're probably still there. Okay, here we are, north, north sector. All right, there's where I have all my water. Where the heck is the darn workshop? It would be nice if they made them look like regular workshops. They don't. The most ubiquitous thing going in the game. Every workshop looks the same. They said, let's be creative with this one.
Okay, so I'm running through all the same tunnels I was just through. Trying to think, what did I miss? I'm not encouraged at this point. Okay, this looks slightly different. If there's stuff to loot or kill, then you might be rowing in the right direction. Okay. The pip's moving back and forth pretty quickly now. There! Now, yeah, that doesn't even look like a workshop. So we've turned that on. Now we can build here. If we really want to build crazy honking vaults all through the thing, we could do that. More to the point, we can scrap everything. All right, we've come back to the home base here. We're gonna look for the, the next one to install, and now we know what we're looking for. A really unobtrusive little gear thing. Yeah, that's just great. And I fully realize that this isn't necessarily going to be enthralling unless you really don't know how to, to figure, figure out where this stuff is, like I didn't. But no, I didn't. I didn't go through and, and do perhaps what you're doing now and look on the internet and see where it is. I actually found the stuff. Though I probably would have been smarter to do what you're doing right now. It's a battery. That's. What happened to you? You got bit by some? Like two teeth marks right in your. Okay, well. Thank God you're a synth. That'll be all fine at some point. She's fine with it. See? Pe people criticize Curie. They say that she's, you know, the least of all the uh, the potential people you could have walking around with you because especially after you upgrade her to her current Curie body, uh, she loses some uh, some stats. But she does look good in tight outfits, and she swings that hammer pretty nice. So, you know. Oh, dear. Again, you know you're going... If you're facing resistance, you're probably going the right way. Okay, can you beat on those guys? There you go. That's a good question. I don't know that...
here's a thought. Why why walk back? Just just teleport yourself back to the uh, main vault. Gotta love fast travel. Ooh, I'm going back to the red rocket. Why am I going back to the red rocket? <laughs> Dump off the armor? Okay. Okay, it's fixing it up. Dumping off the stuff. Great, there's a cow in my way. Come on, cow. I just want to get rid of these things in your... Iron hide, really? Really? This is why you need to give yourself more than one approach. I mean, I did for security reasons. They can only come up that way and it's surrounded by guns. But cows are a thing. Two-headed mutant cows. All right, it's good. You're just balancing on one hoof on the railing. I'm impressed with that. Okay, well, this is that was random. Oh, no, it's here we go. We're going to see if the other stuff works. How do we install stuff that we have gleaned from uh, from Vault 88 at a place where we could possibly use it? Miscellaneous, where? This took a little while. Ah, here we go. It's in Resources Vault. That's where you'll find the stuff. Here's the, you know, the Power Cycle 1000. Do we throw this down? Come on, throw it down. Do it to it. And I'm mostly just putting this stuff down so that, you know, my vault Denzians here at the slug have some benefits. There's that noise again. There's something definitely glitched out here at the slug where you get that clicky noise periodically, and I don't know exactly why. Interesting, you have to assign a settler to that, which I've never really done. You need a dedicated optometrist to get the, the benefit of the photoraptor. Same with the soda fountain. You need a soda jerk. You just do. I think I finished wiring that up properly. Now these they just need to be hooked up. And look at that, they'll snap. Sometimes. Literally sometimes. Come on. Come on.
All right, happiness improved. <laughs> Luck boost added. So before you go out, if you want to have a, a better chance of criticals, you're going into something violent, hit one of those. Endurance boost added. So you can take a run along around a lot of these, you know. Stamina boost, strength boost. You can get all your stats up by one. Can't do anything with that. There's nobody there running it, so. Caffeine boost, I don't know. And ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. That's pretty much all we can glean from Vault 88. I hope you've enjoyed this video, you found it informative, and as always, this is your Black Knight. Have a great night.